Uh, first up there, let's talk to Lisa Nandy, Labour MP, of course, and Shadow Leveling Up Secretary joins us live from College Green. Good morning to you. Hello, good morning. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I must ask you about the big story of the week. First up, Prince Harry. He's in the news of his court case uh, of phone alleged phone hacking. Um, he's been having a go not just at the tabloid media, but also having a go at the government. He said earlier uh, yesterday in his testimony, our court, our country is judged globally by the state of our press and our government, uh, both of which I believe are at rock bottom. And he said, democracy fails when your press fails to scrutinise and hold the government accountable. And he said, choose to get into bed with them so they can ensure the status quo. Do we have a rock bottom government? Well, look, I mean, I, I have a lot of sympathy for somebody who lost their mum in unimaginable circumstances and is clearly having a very hard time. But it's an active court case. I don't think it'd be right for me to try and interfere in. Well, it's, it's going to be a process. judge, not a jury. Yeah, but there are, you know, there are allegations that are being made in a court right now and it's right that the judge makes a decision about that, not politicians. Um, and I think we just need to see how this plays out and what decision is reached. We have a, a free press in this country. That's a really important principle in a democratic system. It's right that they hold themselves to the highest standards. It's right that they're held to account when they fail. And really what this case is about is whether in Prince Harry's case that has happened and it's not right for me to try and interfere in the decision of a court in regard to that. Okay. Uh, we've had some uh, new figures out from the um, OECD um, uh, looking at uh, uh, what is happening in terms of... I'm now, I'm now not going to be able to find these figures, which annoyingly I've... Uh, oh, no, I've got them right here. I do apologise. Uh, the UK could, is to have the highest inflation in the developed world this year. This is uh, what the Organisation for Economic and Cooperation and Development has said. Their latest set of forecasts that came out uh, in the last half hour or so. Uh, this is basically ahead of uh, risking... Um, it, the issue is energy prices that are a substantially increase in the problems of inflation but also dealing with uh, rising interest rates as well. Um, whose fault is it that we're going to be seeing the highest rate of inflation in the developed world? Well I think the, the problem is that for 13 years we just haven't prepared and made sure that we had proofed our economy and our country for shocks that might happen so every country in the world is dealing with an inflation crisis but britain is uniquely ill prepared to cope with it particularly Why? in relation to energy we've spent over a decade um, getting rid of our gas storage slashing investment in solar banning onshore wind and as a consequence we went into this overly reliant on global supply chains um, rather than having our own homegrown sources of energy. Rishi Sunak's in the United States at the moment where Joe Biden has got on the front foot, is investing heavily to make sure that the United States wins the global race for those energy jobs. And, 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 well, how, and here in the how UK, are they the doing that? They are fracking. Lisa Landy, they are fracking for the gas underneath their feet. That, they've also got you know, the, world, the world's second biggest uh, oil uh, uh, retail, you know, exporter as well. Your, you, your, your party is a yeah. You're in favour of nuclear. All credit for that. You're opposed to fracking, and you have got official policy, which even the unions have said is is insane. Uh, where you are uh, planning to ban all new licences for oil and gas uh, extraction in the North Sea. So you want to limit our ability to extract our own energy to be energy secure and not have to rely on and deal with price fluctuations around the world. So if you're praising America for doing the exact opposite of what Labour would do if they were in government. I, I thought the energy conversation might send a blood pressure through the roof and apologies for doing it. But what I won't apologise for is the fact that we're taking a long term view of Britain's energy needs and it's not true to say Julia that we don't believe that oil and gas is part of that mix we do I'm not ideological about you just energy. want to import I think this it needs a mixed energy system but there is no point in doing what the government is doing which is only being prepared to invest in fossil fuels which the entire we've world we've got loads of investment in renewables we've there's got, loads of investment in amazing, renewables that's nonsense we've got amazing opportunity we've got amazing opportunities here in the UK we're an island for goodness yeah. Sake. And we've got and gas got and oil in the wind, sea next to got... us, and we've got gas underneath our feet. And you in Labour don't want us to exploit that. You want us to use gas and oil from America and Saudi Arabia and Venezuela. That is not a sensible a policy or a long-term policy for our, our country. Yeah, OK, but that's actually just not true. What which we bit, want which to bit do of what I said is isn't true? Business 
Well, what we want to do is what business leaders in places like Aberdeen have been trying to do for a decade with no support from the government. We want to take those incredible skills that exist in parts of the country where we have fossil fuels still and transfer them into the jobs that will last for decades and decades to come. Take the decision up in Cumbria recently to reopen a coal mine, which even the government accepts will create jobs that only last for a matter of years, if yeah, not we months. Need that coal right when now. they That's could have invested it. when they could have invested in new nuclear which would have created thousands of well-paid jobs that would last long into the future okay, no, I'm all in favor of the nuclear jobs and we think that's a crying shame yes, we also need there are there are some there are some um, industrial processes that need coal that is a reality there's also no one who knows anything about this subject who thinks we're not going to rely on fossil fuels for the vast amount of uh, many of our energy needs we can we can rely on solar and wind when the wind blows and the sun shines for our electricity needs we cannot rely on that for to to power all of our cars and all of our industry that is not going to happen we need to use and we will continue to use for decades to come you talk about a long-term view oil and gas the, the Labour government pledge is that we will not be getting new oil and gas, any new licences, any new uh, excavations, any new extraction in the North Sea, and we're not going to frack in this country. So where are we going to get our gas and oil from, and why do you think that that's a long-term view if we're going to have to import more oil and gas from overseas, which makes us more vulnerable security-wise and price-wise? Well, you've just answered your own question because we have oil and gas licenses that are currently granted in the North Sea that provide some of our energy mix. And as I've said to you repeatedly, I've always believed in a proper energy mix. It's one of the ways that you prevent capture in the market by any one source of energy. But the, there are great opportunities here, particularly around new nuclear, where, you know, across the country, outside of London and the South East, nuclear is one of the best sources of well-paid jobs. And in Warrington, in Cumbria, we are pioneering new forms of technology in nuclear, and yet the government has stalled and stalled and stalled on getting new nuclear they have. power I mean, I, say, I think most of my and audience would say, "Play got all your houses in order to move forward." Yeah, Labour, no, well, no, Tories sorry, haven't built any. Tories haven't built any. You know, you're all as bad as each other in terms of long-term energy policy. But the reality is, on, your policy is even worse than the Tory policy. We, commis we commissioned the last nuclear site when we were last in government. That was over 13 years ago, and the government still hasn't managed to build it. And that is a, a crying shame for people it in is. this country. And we will we will crack on and do it. That's our commitment. So okay. I don't I don't accept for a moment but, but that it's a plague on all your houses. We've got a plan to deal with it. Nuclear is not going to meet all of our energy needs. And when when the lights go off and when people are paying an absolute fortune to heat their homes, um, do you think the voters well, are, are going to say well done, well done, Labour and Lisa Nandy? Because I don't think they are. I don't think they're going to. I don't think they're going to. Let this wash. Can you hear me? I'm sorry, yeah, it just cut out at the apologies, end. I apologies, apologies, I wasn't quite it. sure um, yeah. whether you've frozen or not. But you know, when the lights go out and the energy bills are still sky high and, and, and we're having all those problems because we haven't had that investment in new oil and sea, oil and gas extraction, whether it's land or at sea, you know, do you think the, do you think the voters are going to say, oh, yeah, that's fine because all oh, yet yeah, renewables? Or do you think they're going to say bye bye Labour government? I just think this is an utterly bizarre premise because unless we get on the front foot and do what other countries, every major country in the world is currently trying to do, which is invest in the clean energy technology that is going to power us most through the of them next are actually century. Investing in we're fossil going to be in, we're going well. to be in real trouble. And we we already are. I mean it's no point in putting hypothetical situations to me about people not being able to afford it. It's not to hypothetical. Heat their homes. It that will is the happen. situation we're currently it in. Will no, we're, we're there now. We're there, we're I haven't there had now, a, we haven't had a blackout Julia. yet. We're there we're, because we're not of 30 far away. years of underinvestment. Yeah, look. So, sorry, I, I think we're talking over no, each no, other. No, no, there is, there is not a nanosecond we're, we're already... when I won't disagree with you. I think the, this government, the Tory governments in the last few, have all completely failed on long-term energy policy. My only worry is that Labour's policy plans on this area are even more terrible and going to cost us more, lead to more blackouts, and are going to cost and, and are going to are going to damage this country, our industrial base. You care about jobs. You know what? When industry can't afford to run a factory because the energy costs are so high, those jobs are going to be long gone. Your old oh, 500,000 green jobs, that's going to be pie in the sky. That's the sort of jobs we're going to lose, not gain, under your policy.
Well, except that we're talking about investing in the cheapest form of energy, and at the moment, clean not, power is cheapest. by far the cheapest. It's not the form cheapest because form you have to energy. have the gas and nuclear backup because it's not reliable all the time, and we don't have battery storage. And we, we, we've, I know. I just think this is a really odd premise because you're arguing that we've said that oil and gas isn't part of the mix, and it is. You're arguing that we've said that there should be no uh, oil and gas as part of our energy mix from the UK and we've never said no, that. No, you're not, so not allowing I'm any not new really licenses. I'm not sure what you're arguing. I think you're, I think you're misquoting no, because we me. Want to, we, want to put, we want to put our investment into the clean into energy sources that are going to power yeah. us through the next century. Nuclear is great, no but wind that. and solar are not going to power us through the next century because they need backup and they cost twice as much. They are not cheaper and they're not reliable and, and they're not going to meet all our energy needs. And I find it extraordinary that a, a government in waiting to, um, has policies which go against basic frankly established fact but there we are let's move on i know you want to talk about teesside and you're um you are looking to bring a binding vote in parliament um uh, regarding uh, a teesside redevelopment can you briefly tell us what that's about well, we've, we've been really concerned about the serious allegations that have been raised about the use of public money on Teesside. The Teesside uh, Steelworks, which was you know, hugely important, significant to people in the region, through which they've contributed an enormous amount to the UK economy for generations. It, has, it, it closed, sadly, um, a few years ago, and the government invested hundreds of millions of pounds in the site in order to kickstart generation that that site has now been transferred into 90 percent private ownership with no public consultation and serious allegations have now emerged that the owners who are major donors to senior conservative figures have made 45 million pounds already out of the site without allegedly putting a penny in that's why we've called for an independent investigation into what's happened to ensure that this site is providing value for money okay. for people on Teesside it's been backed by the Tees Valley Mayor but the government is blocking it and we're seeking to overturn that I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna throw out by the way that um you can't make steel without coal but i'm just throwing that out there i'm not starting that battle again let's talk briefly about um uh, margaret ferrier she is a former smp uh, mp uh, she is now facing a 30-day ban from the house of commons for an outrageous breach of covid rules which she knew she had covid back in uh, autumn of 2020 she got on a train uh, traveling across the country knowing that she was covid positive at a time when that was absolutely uh, against the law um and i'm immoral many people would argue as well again this before uh, you know jet and vaccines and the like um uh, she is going to be suspended parliament that raises the prospect of there being a recall and a by-election what are your hopes that labor could try and take what would have been an smp seat well, first of all, at the risk of sending you into outer space, there is such a thing as green steel. And in relation to <laughs> Margaret Ferrier, this is, this is the right decision that people in her constituency now have the chance to elect in a member of parliament who's going to represent their interests. We're confident. We've had a great leader in Scotland in Anasawa. We've made huge progress in the polls since he became leader. And we're starting to win back the trust of people in Scotland again after a catastrophic defeat several years ago. But we're not complacent and we're going to go up there i'm going to be up there we're going to fight for every vote we're going to be making our case and we hope that people will back us all right really good to talk to you always great to have a, a debate with you lisa and andy they're live from college green